Hello everyone. Today we are going to start exploring H2 receptor antagonist, also known as H2 blockers. Welcome to this exciting journey into the world of H2 receptor blockers. Today we will explore what they are, how they work, their clinical uses and much more. Now before we start exploring H2 receptor blockers, let's understand what H2 receptors are. We already studied this in our previous video that these tiny receptors are present on the surface of parietal cells in your stomach lining and play a vital role in controlling gastric acid production. Also we studied in our previous video that histamine is released from enterochromaffin like cells in response to the gastrin and other stimuli. Binding of histamine to the H2 receptor stimulates the activation of proton pump that is H plus K plus ATPase pump leading to the secretion of gastric acid which this proton pump exchanges hydrogen and potassium ions across the parietal cells leading to secretion of gastric acid. Astroreceptor blockers here are like the superheroes of your stomach. They are the medications that inhibit the action of H2 receptors. How action of H2 receptors is inhibited? Imagine them, H2 receptor blockers, as the switch off for the stomach acid production. Now let's have a closer look at how these blockers work. Can you guess what H2 receptor blockers do inside your stomach? The H2 receptor antagonists inhibit or the H2 receptor blockers inhibit the acid production by reversibly competing with the histamine for binding to H2 receptors on the basolateral membrane of the parietal cells. This is the parietal cell, this is the basolateral membrane. Here is the uh, histamine receptors present. These are the histamine H2 receptors. Now histamine and these H2 receptor blockers, they fight with each other for binding to this receptor. In the stomach, these H2 blockers are especially attracted and bind with this H2 receptor. This binding is reversible means it is not permanently attached. These blockers are not permanently attached here. It is this binding is temporary. This means they are the reversibly they bind with the H2 receptors. Now when the histamine binding is blocked, when this histamine is blocked from binding to the histamine receptor, the subse subsequent Signaling cascade that would normally lead to increase the gastric acid secretion is inhibited. As a result, overall production of the gastric acid is reduced. So, these H2 blockers inhibit the acid production by reversibly competing with histamine for binding to the histamine receptors on the parietal cells. Now that we know how they work, let's see where H2 receptor blockers come to rescue in the medical world. These drugs play a significant role in reducing the gastric acid secretion and are commonly used to treat the conditions that are associated with excessive acid production, such as gastroesophageal reflux disease, peptic ulcers, zollinger adlison syndrome, preventing the stress ulcer in critically ill patients. So these are the superheroes we were talking about. Permetidine, Cimetidine, Renatidine, Roxatidine and Nizatidine. Four H2 antagonists, Cimetidine, Renatidine, Permetidine and Roxatidine are available in India and many other are marketed elsewhere. Okay, now we will study the clinical uses individually where these H2 receptor antagonists or H2 blockers come to rescue in the medical world. First is the gastroesophageal reflux disease that is GERD. Gastroesophageal reflux disease commonly referred to as GERD is a chronic medical condition that occurs when stomach acid frequently flows back to the esophagus that is the food pipe. This backflow of the acid can cause irritation and inflammation of the esophagus lining leading to various uncomfortable symptoms. These blockers are used to manage the GERD by reducing the excess acid production, relieving heartburn and promoting the esophageal healing. Next is peptic ulcers. 
Peptic ulcers are like open sores or lesions. These are like the tiny wounds that develop on the inner lining of the stomach or upper part of the small intestine that is duodenum. Occasionally they occur in esophagus. These ulcers occur when protective lining of the digestive tract is damaged or eroded by the stomach acid and the digestive enzymes. Primary causes of peptic ulcer is often presence of bacterium called Helicobacter pylori or long term uses of NSAIDs that is non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs. These blockers reduces the gastric acid secretion. They are effective in treating the peptic ulcers, helping them to heal and preventing their recurrences. Next, it is used in Zollinger Ellison syndrome. Zollinger Ellison syndrome is a rare disorder where the stomach produces excessive amount of gastric acid, leading to severe peptic ulcers in the stomach and small intestine. ZDS, in ZDS, there is abnormal growth usually a tumor called gastrinoma in the pancreas or in the duodenum. These tumors releases large amount of gastrin. In response to gastrin, histamine is released from the enterochromaffin-like cells, which triggers the excessive acid production. This gastrinoma or these tumors causes release of the gastrin. This gastrin acts on enterochromaffin-like cells and releases histamine. Histamine acts on the parietal cells and causes excessive acid production. These blockers inhibit the histamine signal in the stomach, which helps to reduce the acid production. This provides a relief from the symptoms and promotes the healing of ulcers. Next is stress ulcers, stress ulcer prophylaxis. Stress ulcer is also known as stress related mucosal disease. This is a type of ulcer that develops in the stomach or upper part of the small intestine that is duodenum due to severe physiological stress. Now, where comes this physiological stress? These ulcers are typically found in the individuals who are critically ill, have undergone major surgery, experienced severe trauma or are in intensive care. Now imagine your body is like a delicate balance scale. When someone goes through major surgery or is in ICU, their body gets, uh, gets stressed out. Just like when we feel worried or anxious, this stress can lead to body making too much acid in the stomach. By decreasing the gastric acid secretion, H2 blockers help rise the pH of the stomach, making it less acidic. This can protect the stomach lining from damaging effects of the acid. Now, uh, H2 blockers are also used in prophylaxis of aspiration pneumonia. H2 blockers give, are given preoperatively preferably evening before also. So they are given before surgery and reduce the risk of aspiration of gastric acid contents during the anesthesia or surgery. Okay, now there are some important points about H2 receptor antagonist. H2 receptor antagonist predominantly inhibit basal acid secretion, which accounts for their efficacy in suppressing the nocturnal acid secretion, that is the acid secretion during the sleep or at night. Now your stomach makes acid all the time, even when you are not eating. This is like a slow and steady drip of acid. At night, your stomach can make more acid, especially when you are not eating. This extra acid can cause problems like heartburn when you are trying to sleep. So in simple words, H2 receptor blockers are good at stopping the slow, constant drip of the stomach acid and that's why they work well at reducing the extra acid your stomach makes at the night when you're not eating. So this basal acid secretion is essential for maintaining the acidic environment in the stomach, which aids in digestion and also protects against the potential infections from the ingested microbes. This suppression of nocturnal acid secretion is particularly valuable in managing conditions like GERD, where the acid reflux into the esophagus is often more troublesome at night when the patients are lying down. Evening dose of H2 receptor antagonist is adequate therapy in duodenum, duodenal ulcer also because the duodenal ulcer healing occurs when nocturnal acidity is reduced. Now we study about the pharmacokinetics. What is absorption? How the medicine get in? Where will the medicine go? How is the medicine broken down? 
and how does this medicine will leave the body now absorption of the h2 receptor antagonist is rapid they are rapidly absorbed from the oral administration with a peak serum concentration within 1 to 3 hours they distribute widely throughout the body including the gastric mucosa liver and kidneys a small amount near about 35% of these drugs undergo metabolism in liver the kidney excrete these drugs and their metabolites by filtration and renal tubular secretion and it is important to reduce the dose of h2 receptor antagonist in the patients with impaired kidney functions about 2/3 of the dose is excreted unchanged in urine and bile rest as oxidized metabolites the elimination t half is 2 to 3 hours dose reduction is needed in the renal failure now what are the adverse effects side effects usually are minor including the diarrhea headache drowsiness fatigue muscular pain and constipation less common side effects includes cns confusion delirium hallucination slurred speech and headaches which occur primarily with the iv administration of the drugs for in the elderly patients now uh, cimetidine cimetidine and not the other h2 blockers has anti androgenic actions adverse effects of cimetidine are more than rest of the drugs so cimetidine and not other h2 blockers has anti androgenic action it displaces dihydrotestosterone from its cytoplasmic receptor increases the plasma prolactin and inhibits the degradation of estradiol by liver high doses given for the longer period of time of the cimetidine produces gynecomastia loss of libido impotency and temporary decrease in the serum count drug interactions h2 receptor blockers may interact with various medications this is also more with the cimetidine and not with the other drugs cimetidine inhibits the several cytochrome p5450 isoenzymes and reduces the hepatic blood flow it inhibits the metabolism of many drugs so they can accumulate to the toxic levels like theophylline phenytoin carbamazepine phenobarbitone sulfonylureas metronidazole warfarin imipramine lidocaine nifedipine and quinidine Ranitidine and famotidine have fewer interactions as compared to cimetidine. Antacids reduces the absorption of H2 blockers when used concurrently. A gap of two hours should be allowed. Tolerance and rebound acid hypersecretion. Long-term use of H2 receptor blockers may lead to tolerance, where their effectiveness diminishes over the time. When you use the H2 receptor blockers for long term, their effectiveness is decreased. Discontinuing of these drugs abruptly can result in rebound acid hypersecretion, causing a temporary increase in the gastric acid production. Now we will study about some important points and com we will compare the drugs, all the blockers. First, cimetidine. It is metabolized in liver with a potential drug interaction. It is used in GERT, peptic ulcers, and ZDS. It may cause hormonal imbalance. and drug interactions it has maximum side effects it it was the first h2 receptor blocker introduced but now less commonly used due to the drug interactions and side effects others are used much ranitidine metabolized in liver with fewer drug interactions as compared to cimetidine it is used in gerd peptic ulcer and sedis it is generally well tolerated with fewer side effects compared to the cimetidine no anti androgenic action lesser permeability to, to the brain less marked inhibition of hepatic metabolism of the other drugs it is about 5 times more potent than cimetidine with a better side effect profile famotidine oral bioavailability of famotidine is 40 to 50% excreted by the kidney 70% in the unchanged form primarily excreted unchanged in the urine making it suitable for patients with impaired liver function and has longer duration of action clinical uses used in because of its higher potency and longer duration it is considered more suitable for the zollinger ellison syndrome and preventing of aspiration pneumonia generally well tolerated with few significant side effects anti androgenic action is absent because of low affinity for the cytochrome p450 and low dose drug metabolism modifying propensity is minimal
it is 5 to 8 times more potent than ranitidine roxatidine metabolized in liver with minimal drug interactions used in GERD and peptic ulcers generally well tolerated no anti androgenic or cytochrome p450 inhibitory actions it is similar to ranitidine but twice as potent and longer acting thank you for your time and attention guys i hope you found this video informative and engaging if you enjoyed our content and would like to see more educational videos like this please consider subscribing to our channel by subscribing you will stay updated with our latest videos and it's a great way to show your support for the channel your feedback and comments means a lot to us so please feel free to share your thoughts and questions in the comment section below i love hearing from your side and value your input i look forward to having you back with me for more exciting content in future thanks again for watching and until next time stay curious and keep learning